At the IFA show in Berlin a couple of months ago, one of the brands that made a big splash was Sony, with a range of new smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and fitness devices. With me in the studio, I have Andrew Fraser, who's the channel marketing manager for Sony Mobile South Africa. He'll be telling us in a minute about Sony's strategy to take over this market. But first, let's look at some of the devices that Sony launched at IFA. What we have here is the new Z3 range. From the Tablet Compact, an 8-inch device measuring 6.4 millimeters, taking on the iPad Mini, but with full HD 1910 by 1200, so a dazzling screen experience. Then there's the new flagship phone, the Z3, a 5.2-inch screen with full HD 1920 by 1080, but what's really significant about this is two days battery life. And then there's the Z3 Compact, which is probably designed to take on the new iPhone 6 at 4.6 inches compared to the iPhone 6's 4.7 inches, but kills the battery life of the iPhone 6 with two days battery life, HD screen, 1280 by 720. I'm going to ask Andrew to tell us a little about Sony's strategy here and why they are going for these form factors where there's already heavy competition in the market. Hi, Arthur. Um I think the, the, the competition in the market is, is a bit of a red herring. I think it's more about what the consumer is looking for. And um, Sony is reiterating their devices very, very often. So you'll notice that we're, we're bringing out a flagship device around about twice a year. And the reason for that is because that, that's how fast the technology is moving in terms of the processor power, the, the capabilities of the device. And in order to keep up with that demand from the consumer, we are we're pushing forward on, on some of our devices. So on our, our flagship devices, we have a twice yearly cycle and we introduce bringing in, our, um, in our, our key functionality, which is things like the waterproof functionality, the, the high power, except, exceptional sound, exceptional screen quality, um, because we need to satisfy that consumer demand. And you're also introducing wearables where there isn't yet consumer demand. How are you hoping to stimulate that demand? I think, yeah, I think that, that it's kind of cart and horse thing is that there's no consumer demand because the usage case doesn't, is, isn't really that, that popular yet. So we've seen a lot of fitness bands out in the market. So things that just track uh, for, for, for people that are doing fitness and tracking your steps and tracking your calorie count and things like that. But I think the usage cases are changing. So for example, with, when we start looking at the smartwatch 3, which has got Android Wear built into it, the usage cases change that you can use the phone as, as a companion. You can talk into it, you can ask it questions, you can get answers from Google, you can do your navigation. Um, I use it when I'm driving. It's fantastic to be able to, to read an address into your watch and then get the directions. You don't have to use your, your device all the time. But I think the other things that are changing is smartwatches have generally been a companion products. They've had to work with a smartphone. Um, and now we're seeing offline capabilities. So with the smartwatch 3, we, we, we're able to have offline GPS. So you can go running with your watch without having to take your phone along with you, and it'll track your GPS route to, for your run, for example. Or you can have offline music playback. So you can play back to Bluetooth headphones directly from the watch, as opposed to having to carry your phone with you and a set of headphones and the watch at the same time. So those kind of usage cases are changing. And I think that what's happening now is um, one of the, the real advantages of Google's Android Wear is that it allows the extension of multiple apps into that Android Wear space. You know, the, the, they're the big gorilla in the, in, the, in the business at the moment when it comes to apps, and they can drive that, that integration of applications into Android Wear. And we're looking forward to seeing some really exciting things happening in the next six months or so. Thank you, Andrew. Let's look at some of those companion devices. Firstly, I have here the smart band with Core. That's the Core, which comes out of the band, and that's really the activity tracker that's built into the uh, smart band. The latest advance is the smart, ba smart band talk, which if you look carefully, you can see has got an e-ink screen on it. That makes it quite exciting because you can display a range of information on it. Best of all, it handles calls as well. You can talk into it and in fact, make your phone call through uh, this band. And it has three days battery life, which is one of the real killer features of the Sony products. Then we have the smartwatches. This was the smartwatch 2, which I've been using for some time, but finding that it's getting a bit clunky and a bit old and depending too much on the smartwatch itself. So now we have the smartwatch 3, 
which looks a little more stylish, still rather large. So you really want to use this as an activity watch rather than your everyday watch. What's really going to be a killer feature is that very soon it's going to add offline GPS. So that brings the activity as well as the mapping of that activity into its own. And on top of that, you'll also have offline music playback. So it becomes more than just a watch and more than just a link to your smartphone. It does become a companion.